Boy, it is a busy time of year in real estate. Maybe you're trying to find a new home in that school district of your dreams, or maybe you've been considering a move for a while, but are seeing the news about interest rates and the housing market, and you just don't know. Well, today we welcome in Jade Warshaw, financial expert with Ramsey Solutions. Maybe you've heard her on podcasts, seen her on YouTube. Here she is. Good morning, Jade. Good morning, good morning. Thanks for having me, Dave. Jade, I wanted to talk about the big picture, real estate market, kind of cutting through all the, the, the stuff right now. How is it looking for people trying to buy homes? Look, I've always said it like this. You let your money decide if it's the right time to buy, not the market, right? Your money decides, not the market. So if you've got your money in place, it's a great time to buy. Interest rates, big part of the news for the last you know two years really it can be hard to make sense of okay what interest rate is a big deal what's manageable for me how are the current interest rates on those home loans especially how do you think that is impacting specifically people wanting to buy you know at the end of the day it's funny because we focus on the wrong side of the equation we focus first on oh the interest rates when really what we need to be focusing on is our own financial situation. If you're interested in buying a, a, a home in this market, the things that you need to make sure are in place are not the interest rate. You need to make sure that you're out of consumer debt. You need to make sure that you've got a fully funded emergency fund saved, and you need to make sure you've done your research and used a mortgage calculator to find out what you can actually afford. Remember, your money dictates it, not the market. And we've got a great mortgage calculator on our website, RamseySolutions.com. Yeah, Jade, I have a graphic here of some of the guys guidelines and one of those is you know percentage of income that should be going towards your mortgage I know you and your husband have shared the story how you climbed out of a five hundred thousand dollar almost debt hole that percentage of income you don't want so much of it to be going to your mortgage it has to be a certain percent or under right that's right, Dave. You know, buying a home is the biggest, most expensive purchase that most of us will make. And we want to make sure it's a blessing, not a burden. And the way to do that is to make sure that your cost monthly is no more than 25% of your take-home pay. That's all in. HOAs, taxes, insurance, no more than 25% of your take-home pay. And of course, we want it on a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage right? Conventional loan. And we're looking to put down a great down payment somewhere between 10 and 20%. Emergency fund. I do want to talk about that too, because maybe you have some money put aside and you've been renting for a while, but it's like, well, I want to keep my emergency fund. I don't just want to like put it all in a down payment. What's kind of the balance there for you? What should our emergency fund be ideally before buying that home? Man, that's a great question. We want to make sure that we have three to six months of expenses saved. And that is, like you said, separate from your down payment. Because once you buy a home, now you're in it. And there's things that can go wrong. There's things that you're going to need to pay for. You're going to want to make updates, possibly improvements. So three to six months is different from the down payment. And I always say, Dave, when you go into buying a house, you want to make sure you have a stacked deck. That's an acronym for down payment, earnest money, and closing costs. That's the money that you need in place. I had to ask to um, home equity loans and things like that. If people who are already in homes where it's like, okay, I want to upgrade this or that, because you had, you had mentioned upgrades. How do you feel about taking out those loans against your home and different things where maybe you don't have that cash set aside, but you're hoping to make a big change? I understand that. Look, home ownership is a big part of wealth building. And the reason for that is because we gain equity in our homes. If we're constantly tapping into that equity to make improvements or to use that money for other purposes, we are eliminating the wealth building purpose of owning real estate. So if you need to make upgrades, always save up and pay cash for those. So finally here, to, to end our talk, I just wanted you to be able to give folks a word of encouragement. Maybe they've been renting or maybe they're thinking, well, now is a time to rent because I can save up money. For those folks who are trying to get into that home, maybe it's that perfect school district, whatever reason, and are looking up at the mountain, right? <laughs> what would you tell those folks right now? I would say there is absolutely nothing wrong with renting until you're ready to buy. Like you mentioned earlier, my husband and I, and I paid off so much debt and it took us 10 years of renting to be in the right position to buy with the right amount of peace and security. And if that's you, that's okay. It's better to buy when you can afford it so that house is a blessing and again, not a burden. Jade Warshaw, incredible job, and I wanted to invite you back here in a few months. We're gonna figure out the timing, but I want you to tell your story about trying to get out of debt from $460,000 <laughs> to zero. I really want you to share that with folks. Would you come back with us sometime? I would love that, Dave. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jade.